Hello, class. Uh, getting another lecture in here before I go off to do something that's mo way more entertaining. <laughs> I tried to put together a good lecture, though, and it takes, I look at several different references and stuff, and because uh, I'm really condensing a, probably a lot more into a short period of time, and uh, you probably all got the audio off anyway. So <clears throat> why don't I um, uh, write down what we are going to be talking about uh, right now. So we're gonna be talking about multiple lines of charge, all right? Rather than just one line of charge, we've got multiple lines of charge now, and we want to look at how they interact, and, and, and they interact in much the same way that the point charges do through uh, superposition. So what we do is we find out what the electric field is of all the individual uh, lines of charge, and then we uh, we use those, we just add the vectors together. We just add the electric fields because uh, they're in vector form together and that gives us what the net electric field is at any individual point in the field. And that's what we're going to be doing uh, today. So what I want to do is I want to make a, uh, I can't really draw this to scale. I don't think I can anyway, but uh, let's see. Uh, there's a positive line of charge. And here's a negative line of charge. And, and let me just put a line, a, a circle around each of those two lines of, of charge. And what I'm going to say is that those two lines of charge are two meters uh, apart. Right? So those two lines of charge are two meters apart. And then I want to look at a point directly under, well, I want to look at actually two points. I want to look at a point directly uh, under the center of these two uh, points of charge. And I want to look at it 20, uh, well, 10 meters down. So if that's two meters, then this should be, let's see, uh, 10, right? one. Oh, I missed it. Here we go. So right, I think that's it, right there. That is the location that I want to uh, find out. Uh, of course, I can't find my ruler now. <laughs> what the, what, there it is. Uh, so that's the point. Now that is 10 meters. Now those are two meters apart. And this from here to here is 10 meters. Right, so we'll draw a huge line down there so as to not waste the good side of the paper. And I think everybody can see that. So that's two meters by 10 meters. And of course, right in the middle here uh, is uh, one meter, right? So both of those two, let's make that a little larger. Both of those two lines of charge are influencing the uh, uh, the point down there. They're 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 both individually creating an electric field about that point. And uh, let's see how those fields interact. That's what I want to see. So so first of all, we've got a positive field here, don't we? Can everybody see that? We've got a positive ch line of charge and we're coming down here. Now, is the electric field from that positive line of charge on this point down here? Now, there's nothing at this point. There's no electron, there's no proton, there's no nothing. 
is the electric field going to be going away from that point or is it going to be going toward that line of charge? How many say away? How many say four? Well, that's what I thought. <laughs> yes, there is the difference between <laughs> an online class. Well, of course, it's going to be going away from the charge. It's going away from the charge. And why is that? It's going away from the charge because we always assume that there's a plus one Coulomb charge there and we think what would the force field be right off that charge. So that's, that's how we, we look at it. All right. Do I have to write that down? Okay. <laughs> Fine. So how about this one though? This is a negative uh, charge, a negative line of, of, of charge. How would that affect a, uh, a positive one Coulomb charge that's at this point? Wouldn't that pull it toward it? I'll make it a little bit longer so it's sort of the same size, right? Do you see that? And I tried to draw this to scale uh, so that everybody can see that, that the component in the uh, uh, y direction is gonna cancel out, isn't it? Does everyone see that the component in the y direction is gonna cancel out and the component in the x direction is going to, to add together? See how that works? See how, see how that works? So that in the end, these two will cancel out and the only thing that is gonna be left is this little thing right here. That's the resultant. That's what's going to be the resultant. Now you're probably wondering what is uh, that uh, angle uh, that, that's going all the way up there. And that's why I sort of wanted to draw it to scale because uh, if, we, if we look at uh, this you know, angle, here, I'll just finish drawing it. If we look at that angle right there, that turns out to be 5.71 degrees, right? Okay, now I've sort of given away the whole problem right there, at least part of the whole problem, because here's what the problem is. We have two power lines. And each one of those power lines has a linear charge density of one microcoulomb per meter. I forgot to put it on. I'm gonna put it on right now. We haven't been going that long, but I might change it a little bit. Let's see. Well, it's because we've been going about two or three minutes, so good. All right. <laughs> That's why I put it there so that I wouldn't forget it. Uh, and of course I did, and now, uh, but I, 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 hey, when I was looking over there, I mean, how long have I been drawing? I haven't even seen my phone sitting there yelling at me, hey, hey, I'm here, turn me on, turn the timer on. Well, okay, we've drawn this all up, and that's 5.71 degrees, just so that you, you, you know what's, what's going on. We also know what the charge is in the line. It's one microcoulomb per meter. And what we want to do is we also want to figure out what is this distance right here, right? What's the distance from, that's getting dried out. What is the distance from the uh, line up here all the way down to there? Because we know that this is one meter here and this is 10 meters here. And I think everybody can see that the actual distance that that's going to be, let's call it R, is just going to be the square root of 10 squared plus one squared, and that comes out to be 10.05, right? 10.05 meters. So it's not much more than 10 meters. We could probably round it off and use 10 meters, but who cares? Uh, so let's look at, at, uh, at, at one and two, and what are we going to call one, and what are we going to call two? Well, I'm going to call, you know, I, I, I can't use the, uh, the blue one, because uh, I'll call this one, right? That looks sort of red. And this will be line two. 
And that definitely looks red. So uh, we definitely can tell what is one and two. And now I forgot which pen, uh, which black pen I was using. Now, uh, we've got that taken care of. We've got the distance taken care of. Let's look at the contribution of E1, the, the electric field contribution of E1 on this point down here, call the point A or whatever, right? Um, okay, we'll call it A. Um, so E1, the electric field that E has at that point down there is going to be rho divided by two pi epsilon sub zero r, right? Now, what is it in the x direction? And what is it in the y direction? Well, let's see, it's gonna come down here and it's going to be, um, cosine, uh, or no, excuse me, sine, of 5.71 in the uh, negative or in the x direction, and then cosine of uh, 5.71 in the y direction in this case. So this would be times the sine of 5.71 degrees in the i direction. Uh, oh, wait, wait, yep. And then minus rho times two pi epsilon sub r, epsilon sub zero r. And of course, this is r. Let's not forget that. That's r. Um, times the psi, uh, uh, cosine. Oops, where's that thing? The cosine. Oh, perfect. It looks just like a cosine. Cosine of 5.71 degrees in the uh, y direction, right? So that's gonna be the, the contribution of E1. That's gonna be pushing it uh, down and to the right. Down and to the right. So you can see I've got it down and I've got it to the right. So how about E2? Well, E2 is the same thing. In fact, why don't I just roll this all together and say that that's going to be rho divided by two pi epsilon sub zero r, right? Which is the same r that we've calculated up there. And then uh, this is going to be uh, pulling up and to the right. So it's gonna be positive i, Right, so this would be that uh, times the sine, 5.71 degrees, uh, I hat, and I was gonna write this up, it doesn't matter though. And then it's also positive J, isn't it? So positive uh, rho over two pi epsilon sub zero R times the cosine of 5.71 degrees. J hat. And you can see that these cancel each other out, right? The very large components of this cancel each other out, as you can see in the diagram that I drew here. And the only thing that they leave as the resultant <coughs> is that. But what is that? That's that. That's really that plus that, isn't it? Because you've got a little bit uh, contribution from this. And then you've got a little bit of a contribution from this, so it's really two times that, isn't it? And in fact, that we see that's what happens. We get this plus this. So if I was going to uh, just add those together, let's just take those two things and add them together and get my total uh, um, electric field, uh, then what I would get is I would get two times rho over two pi epsilon sub zero r times uh, the sine of five point, uh, well, that didn't work out well, seven one, that's a point, uh, degrees uh, I have. So 
it's also, you got to remember, look, look what's happened here. Un right underneath these two wires, we've canceled everything out in the Y direction. The only thing we have left is uh, this uh, electric field going in the X direction. It's going in this direction, remember. Isn't that odd? That right there, of course, it's not odd because that's how the electric field uh, lines go, uh, intermediate between two uh, conductors, between two uh, mutually charged conductors. As you know from the earlier lecture that we had on, uh, you know, two, two charged, I think uh, it was charged particles at that time, but <clears throat> Maybe it was, maybe it, maybe it was two charged lines that I was talking about even then, just with the electric field uh, lecture that I had. I think it was lecture six. Anyway, let's get back to this. So the total electric field then at that point is just going to be in the I direction, in the X direction, and it's going to have this value right here, right? Now, let's, uh, let's put some, some numbers in there uh, and calculate exactly what that field is going to be. So if I have uh, to find out what the magnitude is, that would be two times, uh, what did I say, one, uh, one microcoulomb per meter divided by two times pi times epsilon sub O and then R, of course, is going to be our 10.05 meters. You know, I wanted to stick that in there so that everybody saw what I was using for that. And uh, what that gives me for a total field, uh, multiplying it by the 5.71 is 357 volts per meter in the I or X direction, right? Does everybody see that? Well, that's good. Uh, the, um, uh, now, now this, the next thing that I was, I, I wanna look at the time, but uh, the next thing that I wanted to do was to look at another location besides uh, just that. Yeah, I have plenty of time. Just that right underneath that. I wanted to look at another location. I'm gonna drop that location down here. And this location is going to be directly underneath the positive charge, right, right here. It's still going to be at 10 meters, but it's directly below the positive charge. That's also going to change this angle here too, isn't it? It's going to change that angle so that that angle is 11.3 rather than just, uh, and I'm going to use blue to sort of highlight the fact that we're going to a different uh, point. And, and there you go. I don't know if you can tell that's blue or not. Um, but anyway, uh, so that is also a different distance, isn't it? So, so R, I'll call it R2. Let's just call that R, R2. Uh, I'll call R2 then uh, equal to <laughs> 10 squared plus 2 squared. I'm just going to call it that. Um, and that comes out to 10.20 meters. So you can see it's still not much longer than the 10 meters. And, and you're probably wondering to yourself, what if we were much closer to that line? And that's the reason that we don't let you get closer to that line. <laughs> that's right. Do not ever climb a, a high power line. You'll kill yourself. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, the voltage way below the high power line is okay, but getting up there, uh, you know, the, just even the, the difference in voltage between the top of you and the bottom of you would start to fry you. Not to mention that the lines themselves are, are hot, 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 except in the middle of the winter, but even, you know, then they're, they're hot. In the middle of the summer, those things are really hot. Now, what is the, uh, the angle that I've got there? 
uh, well, that's going to be uh, the inverse tangent, right, of uh, 2 over uh, 10 rather than 1 over 10 uh, like it was before. And I'm pretty sure that gives me 11.3, but let me just uh, double check that. Uh, yes, 11.31. So there you go. And now we've got the two uh, contributions again. And this is what I want to look at. Now, this, this one here, uh, uh, number one, <laughs> well, this, this one, hey, it is video. You can see what I'm doing. Um, this one here uh, is going to uh, push this down and away. Because remember, we're envisioning the fact that it is a plus one Coulomb charge, and what would the force be on that plus one Coulomb charge? And the plus, and, and, and it's away, it's going down. Now, how about this one here? This one is going to be pulling up, isn't it? And it's not gonna be pulling up with exactly an equal amount because it's a little further away, a little further away than that one. But you can see that really it's pretty much canceling. It's going to be doing the same thing this one was. I've drawn these larger. In canceling this out a little bit, uh, isn't it? But I still want to analyze uh, the two things. So let's go. Let's go E1. What's my contribution from E1? And I think everybody can see that we've got rho divided by 2 pi epsilon sub 0 and then R for uh, E1, what is that going to be? Well, that's going to be 10 meters, isn't it? Because it's going straight down. There is no, you know, extra distance. That's just what it is, the 10 meters. Um, and, of course, that's going to be in the minus uh, J hat direction. So we can stick that all together later. Um, <clears throat> So uh, let's throw some numbers in here, though. So I have one microcoulomb per meter divided by two times pi times, hey, what is that? Epsilon sub zero. That's right. I'm going to ask the person in class that doesn't know what it is, and you're going to tell me. Excellent. 8.85 <laughs> times 10 to the minus 12. Farads per meter, right? I hate to write that out every time, but it's just something that's so important that that uh, you know you guys remember. So, why am I using the blue? That's not a very good one. Anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, that's what we've got, and uh, and of course that's in the minus j direction. But uh, I'll, I'll just put that there. Uh, but what is that? And in fact, I don't think that I actually uh, did that, so I'm going to pause this. <laughs> uh, I, I, wait, 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 did I? Um, I did not. Just a second. Okay, I'm back again. And yes, uh, that was uh, 1798. 98, uh, well, minus 1798 in the J direction and nothing in the X direction, obviously. So let's go to E2, right? E2 is going to have exactly the same thing, except it's going to have a different distance. Instead of uh, um, 10 meters, it's going to have 10.2 meters, right? And uh, that's going to be well. First of all, we have to decide. This is going to be the um, sine of eleven point three one degrees in the i direction, and then uh, and that's going to be positive. And then you're going to also have a positive uh, row over 2 pi epsilon sub 0 times 10.20, right? I wanted to put that 10.20 in there 
we're gonna have to get some new sharpies. That's what they that's what those those people do to make these sharpies. <laughs> they only give you a dash of ink. Right? They give you twenty sharpies for a dollar, but then you only get a dash of ink in each, in each one. And then this is going to be the uh cosine of eleven point three one degrees. Uh so that is minus this is plus, yep, that's right. Um in the uh, J hat direction. Now, let's look at that because uh, we've got some uh, different numbers here. I'm gonna just pause this for a second and take the other cake out of the oven and I'll be right back. Okay, well, if I add these two up, I end up getting this being uh, E1 being you know, minus 1798. Uh, this one right here is 1728.5. And that would be this guy right here. And then this one is 345.7, right? Of course, there is nothing to add this to because this has no X component and this is a positive value. So when I, I look at the total uh, electric field that we've got here, it's gonna be this one for sure, which is the 345.7 um, uh, volts per meter in the I hat direction, that's that. And then we also have a component in this direction too. So that's minus 1798 and this is plus 1728.5. So that gives me a minus component of 69.48 volts per meter in the J hat direction, right? Does everybody see that? And so um, if I find the vector magnitude of, uh, of those, just a second, 69.48 squared plus 345.7 squared, taken to the square root, 352.6. So I've got a magnitude of 352.6. I'm sure I don't have to tell anybody how to do that. <laughs> That's right, it is a thing. And then what uh, what is going to be the angle uh, that, that accompanies uh, that electric field there. Now I think everybody can see that uh, this part up here is not as large, it's not gonna be as large. So there's still gonna be that little dash that's down here. So what we end up getting is we end up getting 345 going out in that direction, but then we also get something down here in this direction. So what we end up with, I'll just use my uh, blue, pen, maybe I can use my fine tip blue pen, is something that looks like this. Of course, it would be right by the A, right? Something that looks sort of down in that direction. Right? Sort of down in that direction because that uh, uh, vector that's going up and to the right isn't quite the same magnitude um, in the y direction. And that's why we end up getting this. And so we end up getting something that's this, but then just slightly down, just slightly below uh, that. And in fact, I, I can give that to you as well. That's 11.38 degrees. Um, yeah, cause that 11.38 degrees. Cause I'm adding a little bit, you know, anyway. Uh, well, who knows? Uh, but that's what it is, and that's the electric field in both forms. So we've got 
both of the two uh, different things, the one right in the middle and also the one that's off to the side. And through symmetry, you can uh, look at the one over here and, uh, as to what it would be on the other side. And I think that everyone would see that it would be pointed, uh, you know, um, down. I mean, if we looked at the one on the other side over here, uh, right below number two, right there. Uh, if we were looking at that and how that would be affected, well, this one would now be pushing off in this direction, right? And this one would be pulling up in this direction with a greater thing. So if you uh, um, looked at it, you, you would see it's just the opposite of this side, right? So it would be going up in this direction. And you can see, of course, that's of course how it's going because that's how electric fields go, don't they? <laughs> right, electric fields, that thing's coming up here and it's eventually going to zip around to the back side of that. It's a huge electric field. And uh, of course, I showed you those electric lines of force around uh, uh, parallel lines of charge uh, the other day. Okay, well, this ends this uh, lecture. I hope I got the bottom in there for everybody. Let me just, uh, yeah, no, I'm sure it's fine.